I think that as a hobby, CNC can be about a lot of different things for different people. It can be about woodworking, it can be about making things, getting to a finished product. It can be about learning how to use technology, learning how to use software, learning how to program. Or it can just be about problem solving. You know, the, the fun for me with CNC is very frequently solving the problems of how to make the thing that I want to make. Recently, I've been thinking a lot about how to create complex 3D forms in VCarve without using any of the 3D modeling uh, plugins or software that are typically used to make uh, complicated 3D things. When I was looking through the options in VCarve for how to start making three-dimensional shapes easily, what caught my eye was the molding toolpath option. The icon here is sort of this 3D shape, and it's clearly made by drawing a two-dimensional profile and then sweeping it along a rail to add the third dimension to create a three-dimensional shape. What I discovered from working with it for a while was that the rail that you sweep your profile across does not have to be a straight line. The rail can itself be a two-dimensional shape. It can be an arc. It can be a circle. It can be a hexagon. It can be an octagon. It can be some random swirly shape. The application, the useful application that I came up with for it was designing and making bowls. Now, my first attempt at making a bowl was something along the lines of what you would get if you were trying to turn a bowl on a lathe. You know, on a lathe, everything you make pretty much needs to be round because you're rotating the object in a circle and carving it with a mostly stationary blade. The setup for this toolpath is incredibly simple. You first draw out a cross section of your molding uh, that's called the profile. And then you draw out a path that the profile is going to trace through your material. They call that the rail. And when you create the toolpath, you select a rail, you select a profile, and it creates a 3D cut uh, based on those two things. And sure enough, running the cut, it creates a bowl, but it has this big stump in the middle of it because the profile is always traced on the outside of the rail. So in order to get rid of that stump in the middle, what I need to do is make this circle extremely small so that that little stump gets cut away uh, by the ball nose bit as I'm cutting out this uh, um, sweep. Recalculate the path that pulls the profile in and makes this perfect hemispherical dish. From there, I can, you know, specify you know, faceted shapes or little details and recreate them easily over and over again. So in order to plan out the design for a bowl, I first draw out the cross section of the material that I'm going to be carving the bowl into. So in this case, I've got a two by six, which measures uh, one and a half inches thick by five and a half inches wide by however long. I'll draw a couple of profiles. One will represent the top of my bowl and the other will represent the bottom of the bowl. Once I've got uh, a concept drawn out for the bowl, uh, I really need to just cut the profile in half because one half is a mirror image of the other half and I only need one half of this bowl cross section in order to sweep it around a circle and get the bowl shape. So first I try sweeping it around a circle and I create the top half of my bowl. And uh, just showing here a example carving of a similar bowl. This one was swept around a hexagon, uh, but carving the top half of the bowl profile. Now, when I flip the material over, I have to be very careful that the center point that I used for the top half of my bowl is the same center point on my material that I used for the bottom half. This way, the top half cut and the bottom half cut 
line up perfectly and you know the bowl doesn't have a hole in the side of it because everything was shifted over a little bit. To do that I just take a measuring tape and measure some arbitrary distance from one edge of my wood. Uh, I say eight inches and I draw a line at eight inches from one side of the wood on the top half of the bowl side, flip the wood over, measuring from the same side of the wood, the same edge, I measure eight inches in again, draw another line. And so when I start off my cuts, I just have to make sure that my bit, which is going to be in the same home position, is always lined up with that line that I drew at eight inches. The other thing that I have to do is design or put together a fence that I can pull my material up to to make sure that it's always in the same position in the uh, the Y or front to back axis of my tool. It's been a bit windy outside today, so I'm taking a little break going to go check on the horses that live behind my house. My back door neighbor asked me how much I wanted to charge them to let their horses graze on my backyard. And I responded, how much do I owe you for mowing my backyard for me? <laughs> I think that it's a pretty fair trade. So it's kind of nice. I get to have these horses in my backyard. They seem to be doing okay today though, given the storm that's coming in. So back in the shop, um, going to get ready to carve out my final bowl design. So the first thing that I have to do is set up the jig that I discussed earlier. Just taking a piece of scrap plywood, a couple of pieces of 2x4 that I have laying sitting around, and uh, bolting those down to the plywood, dropping the handy bot on top, bolting the handy bot to the piece of 2x4, and cutting the front face of the 2x4 for use as my fence. I'll use the handy bot to actually cut the front face of that fence so that it's exactly parallel to the X axis on the handy bot. And this gives me a perfectly flat surface against which I can clamp my material as I'm cut carving out these bowls. I can then slide my material into my jig that I've created and align it and start my first cut. So I decided to cut the bottom of the bowl first and follow that up with the top half. And I've taken advantage of the option in VCarve to use a large area clearance tool, which is really just a roughing pass that removes a lot of material. So once I'm done with the back side of the bowl or the bottom side, I remove the material and flip it over and realign everything and start the top half of the bowl. Same thing here, I'm using a roughing pass. It starts out deep at the beginning because it's cutting the center of the bowl, which is dished down very low, and then it works its way out. And finally, the bit wraps around the outside and I stop it when the bowl starts to drop out of the, out of the material. I didn't quite get all the way through with this cut, but it's easy enough to take my pocket knife and just sort of peel away the little onion skin of wood that's left behind after finishing that cut. I can totally change the appearance and shape of this bowl just by adjusting either the profile that I'm sweeping or the rail that I'm sweeping it around. And it's so easy to make changes and get a huge variety of shapes. And it's just sort of a fun afternoon project uh, that you can knock out pretty quickly without a whole lot of preparation and planning and design. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll Check back in soon with some other ideas for projects that I have, and I'll see you around.